Hi everybody, Leslie here, back in my craft lab. I've got two cards for you today and they're both sliding puzzle cards, but I would say they're not beginner cards. So this one, it's quite tricky. It's a hard one to do because it's three quarter inch pieces. So the measurements, some of the measurements are a bit tricky. And just to prove that, I messed up and did it wrong. So I've ended up having to stick my bottom row down because when I came to cut it up, I cut it up correctly in one direction and I'd already cut it in that direction. And then I came to do my first row and instead of cutting it to three quarters of an inch, I cut it to half an inch. So I've ended up changing plan part way through <laughs> and sticking my bottom piece. But because it's actually a really hard puzzle, having a guide left on the card isn't such a bad idea anyway. So it kind of worked out in the end. My top row is also because of that. Um, if you look, the pieces for the top row are a different size. But because there's four pieces on the top row that are kind of all the same, I don't think it matters because it means you don't get it mixed up with the ones on other rows quite so easily. So I went with it carried on, finished the card because I didn't want to waste this amazing sparkly panel that I'd already made. But it just goes to show most of the time when you make mistakes, you can fix them somehow. So there's still an amazing card. That gave me a little eureka moment. And I thought, oh, why don't I just use the bottom row as a stopper and do one building it the other way? So this card is a sliding puzzle card don't know why I hadn't thought of this before, but the pieces slide in from the top. So the slots are running vertically instead of horizontally. So I've got a bottom stopper so your pieces won't fall out. You don't actually need the side pieces as side stoppers, but it just neatens up the edges and it makes things a bit tighter. So if you're worried about the pieces sliding off, I've done them with frames where everything slides in from one one side before but this is probably even more secure because this is on a top folding card so once it's stood up and made nothing's going to come sliding out of anywhere so that's that one so one of my favorite dies this is an old die from the works but you could make it with you know any other dies that you've got but I do just want to say, if you are a beginner and you've not made any of the sliding puzzle cards before, I'd recommend you go back and watch one of my earlier videos where I do a better job of explaining how to make these from scratch. Because I messed up so much today, I've probably not done the best job explaining. It was just one of those days. Everything went wrong. This one went wrong. If you look really closely, it's a bit messed up here, but I carried on again and used it. But one of those days, I think it is a good video still because it helps show you how you can fix mistakes if you do go wrong. So let's get on with it and make these two cards. So for this one, I thought I'd show you, I'm gonna use some glitter. I know not everybody likes glitter because it's not really environmentally friendly. I've had this glitter in my collection. I got it from TK Maxx, which phew, probably 15 years ago. So I've got all this um, American Crafts glitter it's sitting there, it's out there. So I'm gonna use this nice green one, which is called Robin's Egg. And I'm gonna try and encapsulate it so it doesn't end up out in the environment. I've got, this is some of my thicker double-sided. I don't know what brand it is. I got this in a job lot of things off Facebook Marketplace. So I'll be honest, I don't know what brand of double-sided it is but it's a thicker one it's not the really thin stuff I'm just going to put this on some white card and I think I'll just chop it off so just so I've got a more manageable sheet and then I've got this which is a die cut so this is really lovely big die I've used it on one of my Christmas spinning puzzle cards already and this is from, it was from the works. It's one of their make and create ones. It cuts this beautiful snowflakey Christmas tree. So what I thought we'd do is peel this off. And you can see what I mean. 
it's kind of a much thicker solid double sided it's not like the sticks too which is a much thinner or stick it sheets they're a much thinner and i am going to try and square this up i will probably come back and trim the panel but you know that look looks like we're in the middle more or less and then i'm just going to put i'm actually going to use the bigger sheet of release paper pop it back over the top and just make sure that's rubbed down really well i'm just going to tip this all over and if you don't like using your fingers you can use a brush just to make sure we're getting it all over So just one more burnish over the top and it's super shiny. All that hopefully now is stuck well and truly into that double sided. And I think while we're doing glitter, I've got another one that's actually not white cardstock. This is actually glitter cardstock. Hopefully you can see. Yeah, this is a white glitter cardstock that this one's cut out of. I've got this which says it's crystal transparent. So this is from the Art Glitter Collection. I've been sitting in my stash for years. Now, as I said, I think, because this looks so good on the black, this is the Stick It double-sided. And I think we'll try, and you'll see what I mean about it being much thinner than the one I've just used. Messed it up, but it doesn't matter. I don't need this bottom piece. No, I was only doing this bottom piece because I haven't trimmed my thing down and I thought I could die cut a word to match out of the bottom part. So I'm not too concerned that this bottom bit has got a wrinkle in it. I'm going to put the tree up here and then we'll probably end up cutting this piece off later anyway. So we'll see. Hopefully this will look like glitter on glitter. So let's try and see how transparent transparent really is. So we go, I've got one that's lovely green sparkly and one that is, it's, so that's the transparent glitter on the black background, which I think is amazing and the tree itself is cut out white glitter paper. So now let's make these into sliding puzzle cards. If you've not seen me do one of these before, I'm going to go through really quickly on this one card how we do it. So today I'm making all of my pieces three quarters of an inch square. So whatever size top panel you want, it's got to be in inches, you've got to be able to divide it by a three quarter. So that's why mine is four and a half by five and a quarter. So it divides by three quarters in both directions. So I've got a base panel that's the same size as my top panel. So you need to mark lines across. I'm just marking every three quarters of an inch. So I've got a silver pen so that you can see it on camera. You could probably do it in pencil if that's what you can see. So obviously you mark it three quarters then one and a half, then two and a quarter, then three, then three and three quarters, then four and half, and then along the length you should be left at five and a quarter. Okay, so hopefully you can see my silver pen on camera. Hopefully I won't smudge it everywhere, but it doesn't matter. You won't really see it. And I'm just using a tea ruler. If you don't have a tea ruler, you can obviously do this with a normal ruler. Just put two marks on to make sure that your lines are going straight across. I can see my lines. Hopefully you can see them. The bottom two, of course, mark a pen stops working halfway. I'm just going to get my inches bored out if because my glass mats marked in centimeters 
The only reason I'm doing it on this board is because this one's in inches. So hopefully, if I've done it right, all of my lines will line up with grid lines in my background, which they do. And all you want to do is with whatever foam tape you're using, you just want to get straight across in the middle of those lines. My foam tape is five millimeter foam tape, which is, I think it's three sixteenths of an inch. And yeah, it's three sixteenths of an inch wide, my foam tape. And it's about one sixteenth of an inch. And all I'm doing is using my board, lining my line up with the grid, and making sure it's going as straight as I can get across. And these are half inch spacer pieces that we're going to use in a minute. And they need to fit between your foam tape. So whatever width your foam tape is, make sure you can still get half an inch in between them. So for the top one and the bottom one, just put one of your pieces in and make sure that your top piece of foam tape is still letting that piece slide in and out. Okay, so the advantage of me doing this on black card is that now you can see mine's slightly overhanging the edge, but that is absolutely fine. We'll trim it all off before we're finished. So that's your base piece. We can trim this off now or we can wait and trim that off later, which is probably what I'll do. But any ends, edges that are hanging out, just make sure I have nothing hanging off the edges. All these strips in here, to make a three quarter inch size piece card, you need half inch strips. So these half inch strips, you need one for every slot. So that's how many pieces we're gonna cut it into. So in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces, and you'll need seven plus one, so the same number plus one, because we need an extra one for the top and the bottom. So these seven pieces, again, I'm just sitting on my board and we're gonna run tape straight across the middle of each one of those as well. Okay, so, you need to sit one of your strips in every slot and just make sure whichever ones you've got, because it depends how accurate you've been cutting on your trimmer or however you've cut them, just make sure that all the ones you've got in your little slots slide in and out of those little slots. Okay, now find the middle. So this one is my middle one. So start on one of the ones that's fixed to the base either side of your middle okay and I'm using my board again and I'm lining it up I'm doing it vertically this time so I can see I've lined it up pulling off my tape backing and one of my half inch strips I'm going to sit it as close as I possibly can to the middle of that tape and I've picked one that's not straight. You know, I said my I haven't trimmed some of these very straight. So I'm not going to use that one in the middle because the middle one's the most important because if you get it nice running nice and straight, you should hopefully keep the rest of your puzzle running nice and straight. I'm going to turn back horizontal, I think. So what you do, once you've got your middle or near your middle one in, you Hold your movie one and I've just realised that I've stuck that on really badly on that one. 
not straight at all. That's better. Sorry, interrupting myself. So hold to that one. So this is the slidey in and out. This is slidey in and out. I'm actually going to sit it out of the way for a moment. Peel your backing tape off. Get another strip and put that strip tight up to the foam tape on the this one sitting up. So this still slides in and out, but it's quite it's not really tight, it's still it's loose enough to slide in and out, but it's butted tight to it. Put your next one back in. Put that up tight, peel the backing off this one, get another strip, put it up tight to that one. And then again, that should slide in and out. Do the same. So this one, put it up tight, peel your backing off. Hopefully my backing will come off. Another one, put it up tight to that one, just check. And this one will overhang at the top, okay? And then I like to flip it over and work the other way. These will all slide out now. I do tend to keep them in the right order just in case you've got any variation in your slots. So this piece, this is all the base workings of your sliding puzzle card. All you need to do, turn it over and trim off from the back anything that's overhanging your base piece. So go base piece, it's all done. All we need to do is cut these pieces into th three quarter inch strips. So you can mark them, you can use a ruler, however it is you want to do. So I've just marked all of mine using my grid on my mat just to count three squares across. And then I'm just going to cut each one with my scissors and these don't need to be really accurate because we'll trim them at the end once they're stuck on the back of our puzzle and like I said just keep them on the right lines so that you know where your pieces go they don't need to be in the right order that's not so important okay so once you've got all your bits chopped up to three quarters of an inch don't worry that they're all sticking out this side. Get them all squared up to whichever way up your puzzle feels the squarest to you. We need to cut our puzzle up. So I'm going to do this on my trusty guillotine. You could do it with scissors, you can do it with craft knife, whatever it is that you're most comfortable cutting up with. Just double check all your measurements before you cut up. So four and a half goes down three squares on my trimmer to three and three quarters. Okay, done it wrong. I'm going to carry on and I'm going to work out a way to make this work because I don't want to waste this. So. Okay, so I think this is probably going to be the hardest puzzle I've made out of all the spinning ones and sliding ones. Now, <laughs> the keen-eyed among you will have noticed after me saying so many times, measure twice, cut once, be careful with these because you're not cutting two inch squares. On the first row, I did it wrong. So we're going to have to work out a way to rescue it. So. I'm thinking that 
I will stick this line down. So I've made this half an inch instead of three quarters of an inch. So I'm thinking I'm going to put this and make this basically, because it is actually really tricky, I'm going to make this so that it's something to match the rest of the puzzle to, because this is really narrow. And I'm going to have the issue at the top as well, that these ones are actually too big. That means that our puzzle is now a row too long. So all I need to do is decide which is the worst end and cut that end off. So I'm going to put those to one side because that's my bottom row. And then I'm going to do what I would normally have done and stick to my bottom row, getting everything squared up. to this bottom corner. I'm just making sure I've got that the right way up because I dropped it. That's square to the bottom. Tape off the next one. Put it up to it. Square to the bottom. And keep going till you've got all your puzzle pieces on. And this is the way that everything ends up square, flat, will slide. If you try to do it any way, other way, trust me, I've tried. Things get squished out of shape or it won't sit flat when you're finished. I think we're just going to stick them on and leave them as bigger pieces. So that means I can just, if I slide those back out, if I slide the top row out, I can just get bits off my scissors. I can just cut all underneath this one that's sticking out. So I've just got rid of a row, give everything a little trim. So usually when I do these, I end up with little bits hanging off my edges. So you just go back, tip your scissors, Give all the edges a little trim. All trimmed and back in, sits nice, all slides in and out, all lovely. Now, obviously we've now got to stick our bottom row back onto our card. This is just a five by seven pre-scored card blank. And hopefully we'll find, we're gonna stick these along the bottom. I think we'll stick it after we've stuck this down so that we know that we're gonna make it match perfectly. So I'm just going to go find a, a word that I can die cut out of this so that it nicely matches. And just so you can see, so I don't get glitter all over my die cut machine in case anything comes off. Not that much came off. I did just put some copy paper on the top. I'm just keeping all my pieces in my puzzle. And I'm putting wet glue all over the back. And that's the beauty of wet glue, you get wiggle time. And this is actually my thicker foam tape because of course we've got foam tape and card going on. So that's my slightly deeper foam tape than the one that I've used in the layers. So this is my little tip. If you've got 
if you put glue on the back of your die cut words or tape, keep them in your dies, pick all the extra bits out and then you can use your die to hopefully poke it out. And it all stays in a nice position. So I'm just using all the little release holes and you'll never notice the little pokey marks because it's glitter. I even got my little tiddle out first go in the right position. So their X cut dies, the, the little tiny individual words that you can get from X cut. So there we go. Wow, blingy. So that was very nearly disastrous. But I think you'll agree it's actually come out okay. So it's on a five by seven side fold. The bottom row, which is the one that I originally cut to the wrong size, is fixed. But it means that whoever's doing the puzzle has got something to match up to. But everything else slides and moves as it should do. And then just because I messed it up completely, the top row is slightly deeper pieces. But it, I guess it means that all these bits that are blank pieces with nothing on, at least you know which ones are the top row. And then there's only three each side to work out. So it sort of works. <laughs> Worst things have happened. But if you mess up your first row, that's something you can do to fix it. But yeah, look at all the bling. And yeah, like I say, I think this is actually the trickiest puzzle that I've made so far. And I've used this die on a spinning puzzle card. But if you didn't have this die, you could do exactly the same process with just random snowflake dies. So you could build up your own tree. So this is one, two, three bigger ones, two little ones. So it's just symmetrical. So if you've got random snowflake dies, you could make your own tree shape. So stick them down in the same way, put the glitter in, in the same way. So that one, that one, that one are pretty much the same snowflake. And then these two are the same snowflake. The two at the bottom, there's one big one there two there, one there, and then they're just infilled with tiny little bits. So there's little stars and things. So you could make your own Christmas tree out of snowflake dies if you really like that particular one. Or whatever, go through your stash, see what dies you've got, but it doesn't need to be a Christmas tree shape. You could have done random snowflakes. Or if you've got like a filigree Christmas tree, which I've got one, but it's a bit small. So if you've got a bigger filigree Christmas tree, you could do the same thing. I know tattered lace, people like that have done lots of nice filigree ones over the years. But I'm sure there's tons of dyes out there that you could use to get a similar effect. So, yeah, see what you've got in your stash. I rescued my own disaster. So it worked, but it's actually given me an idea to do something a little bit different with the next one. So let's do another if I go tight to this image, I can make it five by five. So the one thing that you need to consider when you're doing these puzzles, you've got to be able to divide it into however many pieces you're going to use. So I'm going to mark in pencil. I've got my ruler, so it's tight to this bottom edge. So I've marked over out on the white bits because it's not quite square either. So because I've not cut, this isn't square on the card, the tree's not quite square on my background pattern. So I've held my ruler so it's square where I want the line at the bottom of my tree to be. Bring in my trusty trimmer. And I'm just gonna cut on that line so that that's the edge that I'm going to square to. So I've made my panel five inches square with my tree more or less in the middle. 
Okay, so we're going back to one inch square pieces so I don't mess up again. So we've got a five by five inch base, five by five inch puzzle, and we've got six pieces that are, I hope I've got six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I've got six pieces that are the same width, so five inches, because it's five inches both ways, five inches by three quarters of an inch. And I've got five pieces that are half an inch wide, okay? As we've done before, we need to mark our back panel, this time just every inch. And stick our foam tape across our lines as we've done before. We also need our foam tape across the middle of our half inch pieces. Pick one of the ones near the middle to start with, peel off your foam tape and this time we've got three quarter inch strips and we want to get that as close as possible to the middle of that one. Running as straight across as we can get and put this one up. When you do it in inches, this actually works slightly better if you've got slightly wider foam tape than this. I haven't and I'm using it for speed, but you could make your own or use slightly wider. So quarter inch rather than this, which is like the three sixteenths inch, you end up with more uniform gaps. So this gap here isn't the same but it doesn't matter, the puzzle still works. So if you've got the same sort of foam tape as me, which is actually five mil foam tape, it will also work. Flip it over and anything that's hanging off the edges, give it a trim. These just all want cutting to one inch. So, this is another way you can do it. If you've got a ruler where your measurements go straight to the end, you can just do it like this. So I'm just sliding it along an inch. I wouldn't recommend this method when you're doing three quarter inch because it's far too easy to get the wrong measurement. And I'll give you one guess how I know that. <laughs> And because there's a lot more wiggle room on the measurements for this particular one, it doesn't matter so much about keeping them on the right rows, in case you're wondering why I didn't when I've said to do that in other videos. So this particular size, doing everything in inches, three quarter inch and half inch, there's a lot more wiggle. So this is the beginner size. If you've never made one of these before, do it with these size pieces because it's a lot more forgiving than some of the other ones, especially the really small ones. There's not much wiggle room. Now, my plan this time is to do it this way up. So, same thing, we need to cut our puzzle piece into inch square pieces and hopefully I won't mess this one up. So after saying all that and doing all that, my guillotine decided it didn't like the double-sided stick. It went through the first direction absolutely fine. So I don't know why it just got caught. It probably got caught on a sticky bit specifically. And it decided it didn't want to cut through. So I'm gonna have to rethink slightly. I probably got something on the blade that's sticky which has meant it didn't want to cut. And we've gone old school and we've used a craft knife and at the moment my pieces are just held together on the back with a bit of washi tape because it actually makes life easier keeping everything in the right order.
hope that no one else noticed. We're handmade, we're not homework. We'll just keep going. So the whole point of this that I was trying to do was I thought rather than having our pieces slide from the bottom, when on the one that I messed up and cut the wrong size and I thought, well, I'll have to make a line at the bottom. I thought, ah, so the pieces don't side, slide off from the side. Why don't I make them so they drop in from the top and just have a stopper piece across the bottom? So that's what I'm going to do. So I am going to do exactly the same. It's just I'm going to stick it this way up and we'll see if it works OK. It, I don't see why it wouldn't. It should do. Let's make sure all my little pieces are in the little slots. And I don't see why this won't work. Just making sure it's the opposite way around. There we go. Well, other than my little messed up bit here, which there we go. These things happen. Um, I think that's worked quite well. So there's a slot. I haven't got it perfectly square down in this bottom corner. So it's not perfectly square up in this top corner. But I know that there is enough foam tape overhang that I could trim that. So let's slide the pieces out. Which way are we going to go? And I have to remember it's the opposite way now. So it's this top corner. In fact, I could do it, just take a little piece off all the way along. It wouldn't need to be this much, probably. And there's still plenty of foam tape. So now I know that when I slide these back in, it will be fine. So same as we've done before, anywhere that needs a little haircut, give it a little haircut. So there we go, all slid back in. But of course, this time it'll be come out this way now. Fortunately, it's quite tight, so they're not completely sliding out so I just need to pop this on a card and I don't even think I'm going to put a greeting on this I think I quite like it as it is so I'm just going to get a six by six card blank so this is just a six inch in six inch square card blank which will give us a border all the way around like that and because these are going to slide off the bottom I'm going to have to work out a way to get my stopper across the bottom so I've got this ooh, super duper I've had this in my stash for years, never used it. Should we go with that? Yeah. So I'm just going to cut a half inch strip. Hopefully you saw how I made the frame. I'm going to just put the bottom on and I put the two sides on with the foam tape. So they're all at the same height as the puzzle. So it will drop in from above and then the top piece, the glue's still drying up there. I've put it in flat so you can see the puzzle pieces in there. They'll still all slide out, but they slide out from the top. So you didn't need the side stoppers. They're not actually doing anything. They're just completing the frame. So if you wanted to do a frameless puzzle, you could, like the reason that I came up with this idea, if you wanted to do a frameless puzzle, you could cut the bottom piece off of your puzzle, the bottom strip, and leave the bottom strip attached, which is what happens in this instance. So I could have made this a little bit taller and had a strip at the bottom that stayed connected to the card. So I think I might do that on the next one. But yeah, it was a bit of a eureka moment that, oh, I could drop them in from the top 
as well as slide them in from the sides. Really Christmassy. I know bling's not to everybody's taste, but lots of sparkle, lots of Christmas cheer. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, it'd be lovely if you've not already subscribed, if you'd subscribe, if you're already subscribed, if you could like the video, comment, it just makes it that YouTube knows that somebody's out there watching and liking our content and they'll show it to more people, which is always lovely for us as little creators. And I still do a little happy dance every time I get a new subscriber. Hopefully it was useful to see if you do make mistakes, you can fix them. We're not perfect. We're all out there making things. Sometimes things you mess up. I, my heart dropped when I realised I'd cut this row wrong. And then I thought, no, how can I fix it? Just get on with it and we'll fix it, which I did. And it's still a lovely card. And the same goes for this. It completely messed up when I cut that bit. But it's not that bad. I might come back and try and put a little bit of glitter just to fill those little gaps. But unless you're really close up. It really isn't, you know, once you're there, it's not that bad. So hopefully that was helpful. Don't get disheartened when you do make mistakes. And do you want a sneak peek of what might be coming in my next videos? Sneak peek. I made all of these this morning and some of these will definitely, definitely be in my next videos. These are all done with different stencils. Look at my elf legs, snowflakes, <gasps> candy canes. Love all of these. So, stink peak. Not sure if I'll manage to use all of these. We'll see. But yeah, coming next. And I'll show you all the different things that I've made all these different panels with. So that was a sneaky peek for everybody who stuck with me right to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.